All right. I think everyone's coming online now. Let's see. All right, that should be good. So if you are joining us tonight, just uh, give me a what's up in the chat so I know who's here, who's not here, all that good stuff. Um, it looks like everything's connecting, so we'll see. At least Restream says it's connected. <laughs> so um, we'll see. Oh, oh, cool. Earlier today, uh, a little bit. I'm like three minutes early, not too much earlier. V in Periscope. Thanks, man. Kira, as I already said, we're not too much earlier, but a little bit. But nice to see you. I hope uh, it's not too early <laughs> for you or it's not interrupting your sleep. Sir and Don X, hey man, what's up? How are you? Just letting the Slack know. If you guys aren't a part of the BroGraph Slack, um, go to BroGraph.com slash Slack. And it's a free open channel. Talk about everything from hardware to Octane to Redshift to cycles. Today we were doing like a little cycles hardware troubleshooting. Um, so a lot of fun topics and you can keep up with us there. 10 p.m. Yeah, it's nine here. Uh, 10 p.m., where are you? You got here an hour ahead of me. So are you in South America somewhere, like Brazil area. Cause I think that sticks out just like a little bit further. If you guys are wondering who I'm talking to too, uh, depending on what channel you're watching on, um, I've got like five streams going or so. So you can watch wherever. Venezuela, Chile next month. Okay, cool, man. I used to know more Spanish than I do now. Um, wish I could talk to you in Spanish, but unfortunately, over the last like you know eleven or twelve years that I've been out of schooling. Um, <laughs> just hasn't hasn't happened <laughs> well I hope you take the redshift bus soon too um, it's it's pretty awesome I, I'm learning more and more every day that's why I'm gonna break down these snow shaders that I made um, just learning how to make stuff faster too and optimizing scenes if Mark Houdini Mark joins in he had a great idea for a little quick tip that maybe I'll go over in a little bit too, just how to work faster inside the render view here. Um, a lot of people don't realize there's all this stuff right in here, like original size versus fixed fix scaling versus fit window versus fill window. Um, and that can all play on how fast your render view is going. So. Oh, I do kind of remember that. Um, cool. 8K by 8K, that's cool. Um, I've never used the command line, but I've used FFmpeg with various softwares, so that is good to know. And this is looking blown out. What is my exposure set at? I'm going to do this at like 15. 
see if that will calm it down a little bit. Real flow. I don't know. I, I actually I don't have real flow, so I don't know. Um, I assume it works pretty well. I know that Turbulence FD and X Particles work pretty well with it, so um, it's something you just have to try, I guess. I I've never needed real flow for anything, so I just I've never tried it. It's weird that that's so much darker than the bucket render. Why is that such a big difference? chat working. Billy says he usually sees the chat in the corner of the screen. Um, you know what, Billy? Let me double check. Um, settings. Let me move this over here. Copy. There's OBS. Why is that not showing up? For you guys chat let's see if that works now if it doesn't work now I have a second solution there we go all right looks like it's showing up now Billy thank you for the heads up So it should be streaming appropriately now. All right, so it's a few minutes after nine. I'm gonna wait like one more minute to see who shows up. Just gonna make sure that all the streams are going. Looks like it is. Cool, all right. Do I not have all the streams connected in here? Weird. Why is that? If you are on the BroGraph chat, for some reason it's not coming through. Um. If you're in the BroGraph Slack, do me a favor and just say hey, or not Slack, um, YouTube chat, because it's not coming through on the Restream app, even though it works in web. All right, let me see. Is it actually showing up in the stream, though? No. All right, I got to tinker with the chat a little bit again. Why? All right, let me copy this link into OBS. This is just ridiculous. Oh, well, that sucks. That makes the chat so small. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, restream. Let's try this one more time. See if I can, can I see everybody right now? No. Oh, wait, nope, I see it in there this time. All right, all right, I think, I think we might be getting somewhere. This is out of control. Sorry for all the little like technical flares here at the beginning. There we go. All right. I think we're good now. Cool. I see hi from BroGraph, hi from Brian HP 2009 
Sup, bros. All right, I can see everyone now. There we go. I was like, I can see that there's so many people in the chat. It's just not coming up. So cool. We've got 11, 12, 15, almost 20 people tonight. Awesome. All right, so let's get started. Um, what's up, Nick? Rock of Force. All right, cool. Brayden, what's up, man? All right, so it's going to be normal open Q&A, just like it says at the very bottom of the bar down there. But I'm going to talk about these shaders that I made. Um, let me go ahead and just bring some up. Do, do, do. I don't think I have them loaded yet. Bring up these textures for you guys and show what I made. If you haven't already seen the pack that came out last week. So now this is the tutorials. I want the textures. Snow. Cool. All right. Just going over here for some reason. So this one is do not eat. Are you really not going to do a slideshow right now, Windows? Ugh. This one is called Frosty. We've got Midwest. We've got Nor'easter, which is kind of just like Midwest and uh, Frosty kind of combined. It's like icy but slushy as well. And then this is just like a big poof ball. So go back inside cinema and we'll start breaking this down. What's going on in Slack? Why do I see notifications? All right, good. They're good. You guys are just tagging the stream. Thought there might be errors again. All right, so let's talk about how this is broken down. Um, I can either open one of these up and go through it, or we can just make one fresh. I think it might be more beneficial to make one fresh with you guys, just so you can kind of follow along. Um, it is pretty simple. Like if you open one up in the node graph, it looks complex, but it's really not. Um, what it basically comes down to is a bunch of different frequency noises. And I forget who did the Arnold tutorial over it, but I pretty much learned this from when I used to do Arnold is there's a really cool in-depth tutorial on how to make snow with Arnold. And it's very much like this. Um, it's a little bit different, but you start with three different types of noises and you can start piling them up. You add them to displacement and then you have some materials and subsurface materials and things like that. So to get started, why don't we just take a look at how to build this from the base up. So we'll just call this bro snow. <laughs> Would you like to play a game? Oh man, I have not watched that in a long time. So we've got our shader ball right there. And I'm going to walk through some settings in a little bit. Arvid Schneider. Yeah, that is exactly it. Thank you, Vitus. Bro Snow. Oh, I should make it with no W at the end. Bro Snow. All right, so here's our shader ball. And this is going to be where we're working. Let me come in here. And the first thing I want to do is talk about how to get the chunkiness, like some ice and stuff. And that really comes down with using displacement and tessellation. So if you don't know what tessellation is, it's pretty much like subdivision surface. It makes it nice and smooth and gives you more division. And then displacement is here in your geometry. So you'll see I have this tag right here on the shader ball. I have uh, subdivision surface turned off because we don't really need it when you've got tessellation turned on. And so you just come in, check enable for that and enable for displacement and you can really start to push displacement. So I'm gonna grab a noise. And this first noise is gonna be kind of just like this a low noise. So I'm just gonna call it low noise. We're gonna pipe it into a displacement in a second. So let's go ahead and grab that from over here. And you'll notice too that these are all color coded. As long as you're up to date with 2.5.52, they now color code themselves, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna use my handy hotkey and just plug this into the output here. And you'll see in a second that we get our noise in there. 
And so for the low noise, it's just kind of gentle. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put our overall scale up to about one. I'm going to change this down to about two and two and two. And you'll see we get these kind of larger chunks of noise going on. Complexity, I think I'm going to come down to like 2.5. Maybe bring our amp down just a little bit to get some more blacks in there. Something like that. And that's pretty much how we get started. And I'm going to pipe it into this displacement here. Go into a texture map. Bring this into displacement. Disconnect that there. Reconnect our original material. Give it a second. You'll see it gets all wavy and weird and wonky like that. So it's probably just a little bit over the top with the scale. Why don't we try something like 0.125? And that may be too too little, so we'll try like 0.25. That's a little bit, so we just get like this nice waviness in there as our bottom scale. And what we can do now is start blending together some of these displacements. So I'm going to bring in this displacement blender here. And if you pull this out, you can see better. Come on, there we go, what these are labeled. So we've got this low noise here. Next, we're going to do just a mid noise. If you have questions or I'm going too fast, just let me know. Um, I'm totally leaving this up to, or open to Q&A as I go along too. So um, just chime in whenever you want. I'm following the chat pretty closely. So here's our mid noise. And so mid noise is gonna be a little bit more complex. Why don't we go up to four? And you'll see we get some of that in there. I think I'm gonna go up to like 1.25, kind of soften up just a little bit in the amplitude. And I think maybe I'll double down on this too. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll go back up to four with this or one. That might be a little too complex for a mid-range noise, but I think I think we'll be be all right. So I'm gonna pipe that in here for a displacement. Bring back this material. Yeah, there. Yeah, um, you know. I don't know when they added the displacement blender because I thought for a while there wasn't one. Um, and then when I went to make these, it was there. So either I just wasn't paying attention or um, it's just always been there. But so what we're going to do is take our low noise, bring it in here to our base. And then in a second, we'll pipe in the mid. I think that's looking all right. I might go a little bit further and do like 0.35. A little bit heavier, sure. And I'll bring it in here and put it on our input zero. So if you've used any of the other blenders, it's all set up the same way. You just start blending them together. And I'll pipe this into this one here. So now it looks like nothing's happening. And that's just because we need to start making some adjustments here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up, maybe like 0.8. And just like the other blenders, you can either blend between these or you can use additives so they actually start to add together. Depending on the aesthetic that you want, you can go either way. I'm going to leave it unchecked for now. So you'll see we're starting to get these nice deviations, or not deviations, divots in there. And for high noise, we're just going to make it nice and noisy. Go like that. Actually, I don't want any displacement at the moment. That way I can just focus on the noise. Additive is where it's at. Depends on what you want to do, man. Like I I don't think additive is really good for this now. If we check out any of these other ones, I didn't really use additive. Like here's Midwest in here, and um, you know, they're they're really not not being used. Um, we were where we bro snow. There we go. All right, so high. Let, let's uh, let's make this pretty complex, like an eight. So you see, we get like really fractally in there. And I'm gonna bring this down to say one point one two five. Get some high blacks in there. Overall scale. I'm gonna go crazy and do like an eight in here. Get it nice and small. And 
let's go ahead and take a look at this, how it displaces. So now you can see we get like this super grainy, noisy snow on there, almost like ice peaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this into port one, putting this in and we'll blend it all together. And right now I just have like a plastic material on. I don't have any cool subsurface scattering or anything. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. Start to blend this in here, maybe bring down our mid a little bit. Maybe not even that much with our high. Something there, let's see what additive looks like. And I'll turn on our bucket render too, just to get a little more detail out of it. Just doing some caching. Optimizing primary. I don't need any optimization. Come on, Redshift. <laughs> that was weird. I've never seen it say optimizing primary before. Usually it's good. It's probably because I'm not using my normal brute setup. So it's looking all right. It gets a little heavy in some spots in here, but no, that's okay. Once we start messing with the material, I think it will get a little bit better. All right. I think that's pretty good to start. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just turn this off so we can focus on our materials. So I'm gonna open one of these back up just to show you. If we look at our material, these are actually based on like subsurface scattering. And there's very little going on in here. Like I don't have any reflection on, all the transmittance down here and, and subsurface is actually turned off. And it's all mostly focused in subsurface scattering, the multi one. So that's what we're gonna be doing here too. Um, and we can make this snow look what like whatever we want. So why don't we go ahead and turn this down here. That looks okay there. Go ahead and kill bucket rendering for a second. Turn this up. I'll make this like 1.2 to start. And if you've never worked with subsurface scattering, you kind of need to keep it in bucket rendering. Sometimes it works without bucket rendering. In my experience, it's hit or miss. Um, I'm just gonna change some of these so it's not too crazy. All right, that should be good for a stream. So I'm just gonna check in with the chat really quick while subsurface scattering catches up. La la la. All right, looking good, cool. Hey, Ryan, what's up, man? I'm sorry I'm not doing any um, cycles for you at the moment. And I'm also sorry that you've had a lot of trouble with that today. All right, man, have a good one. So here we go. We've got subsurface coming in. And you can see it takes a little bit longer. Nothing crazy. It's 30 seconds. But um, so be prepared that... It's not gonna be instant like with metal where it's like, oh man, I have beauty in three seconds. Subsurface scattering does take a little bit longer to calculate. So we've got this nice little base here and let's go ahead and go in here and... Why is my color picker all, all the way on the other screen? Weird, uh, get something in here. Let's, let's go a little crazy and get some like big blue. So the way you can think about this, these layers are like skin. So you have like the top layer, which would be like your epidermis and then um, dermis and subdermis. I forget what the third one is called, or maybe it's dermis, epidermis and whatever. Anyway, the three layers of your skin. So it's like the peachy top color, the like mid kind of tans and then blood underneath. 
All right, so we've got that blue coming in now. And what's going to happen is with radius, it's just kind of, it spreads it out. So I think, what did I do in the other ones? I think I kept it pretty tight. These ones I might try with it spread out a bit more. No, I started doing two and four. Okay, so I, I didn't really keep it that tight. By tight, I mean like the radius is like one and under. Do they have to add up to one or does it doesn't matter. It does not have to add up to one. If you turn on additive, then um, they'll start to add together, but it still doesn't matter. I don't think it, it has to add up to one because even the base layer here isn't being uh, computed. You're kind of just blending between them all. Epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Thank you, Billy. You know a lot. <laughs> Look, man, I... I I kind of know. I have tattoos too. I can be cool like you. I just forgot. Um, let's go ahead and go up to four for this thing. And then I'm going to go in here and we'll do like really like light pink undertone maybe in here. Bring that up. Keep this one at like two. How's your new car, Billy? Billy got a new 2018 car today. Ooh, I'm liking that. It's kind of got like this afternoon, like, Sierra Mountains skiing kind of look to it in there, especially like these blues up in here. Let me go ahead and change my cameras so we can get like a tighter look on that. That's starting to look pretty sexy. It's pretty dank. I saw the photo on Instagram. Looked looked pretty, pretty sweet, dude. I like that you're on this chat or this stream, Billy, and then in another Slack, you're also giving me feedback on a reel. <laughs> you're like hyperactive at the moment. Dude, he bought it with BroCoin or MoCoin. Yeah, all right, so this is getting a little bit blown out here. And I think it's mainly just exposure and all that. But I am really digging how it's like blue and then we get these pinks in here. And then in a second, I'll hook up the displacement and then we'll really see what's happening. I mean, they should have given Billy a car for the job, especially for the gig he was working on. All right, I'm digging that. That's looking pretty decent. So let's go ahead and rehook up our displacement and then we'll start messing around with some of like the coating and stuff on top to get some little bit of sheen and sparkle to this. So you can see as soon as we hooked up the displacement, got all crazy in here, and then it's gonna calculate with the subsurface, and it's gonna look beautiful. Oh yeah, it just looks like wet, chunky snow. That's perfect for building snowballs and like ice balls. Look at that. That is totally some bro snow right there. Let's move back and take a wider look at that. And then we'll add a little bit of coating on top just to get get that Santa twinkle. <laughs> I 
I like the emojis, especially since they're just like completely non-standard emojis for restream. <laughs> like a five-year-old did them. All right, so I like it. But now we have the displacement and it gets blown out in some areas, so we might need to work on some roughness in some areas. I think maybe I'll bring this the scale radius or radius scale down to 0.8, see if that helps out a little bit. Nah, I was gonna make it. So we're a little bit more. So let's go up to four with this. I need a little bit more absorption going on there. All right. So what's going on in the chat? We've got just same old stuff. Billy's still talking about his car. This giant bag of money. It's like the wolf of wall street but for motion design ah four made it too much too all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back down to like one point one two five in here and we'll bring this down to, uh, i was already at four how about two i'm gonna have to bring the weight down just a little bit and i'm going to go ahead and bring this roughness up to 0.35 then we're going to get some coating on here Right now, it's kind of just an aesthetic game of perfecting it however you want. The motion designer of Wall Street. Well, Billy's in like the Detroit area. So uh, what famous streets do you have in Detroit, Billy? The motion designer of Flint. All right, I'm going to accept that. I'm going to accept that it's getting a little bit blown out up there because, um, you know what, that's how snow is going to react anyway. It's just a little bit heavier than I was expecting, but, you know, whatever. Moshogan Avenue. So, the, the motion designer of Moshogan, Moshogan Mograph. So let's bring this up a little bit and get some sheen on here. We got a little bit of, I guess, blue, like almost blue purple right in there, something like that. And we're going to do like Yeah, so now you can see we get like these little specks of glistening down in here. Just a little bit. I think I might soften it up with like 0.4. And then I'm going to go back in the base here. I might even bring in some regular reflection of like 0.2 and like 0.2 of this. So if you haven't already bought the snow, you can now figure out how to make your own. Um, but however, if you want to go buy the snow, if you click on the Gumroad link in the bio, at least the bio on on my channel, um, or go to gumroad.com slash, what is it, VXXXI for 531, um, you can buy a bunch of snow there too. Not Wall Street snow though, snow snow shaders. Cool.
cool. So that's that's pretty much how you make snow. Um, I'm just gonna come in here, take a look at like super close up edges. This is probably blown out too. When I do 15. So, you know, you can play around with your lighting, get it however you want. Um, but this is pretty much what I was imagining. You know, we get these big chunks, little chunks, and then like super high scratchiness in there. And then we get these little flakes of sparkle in there. And then if we go back to this camera here, make sure, yep, that looks like it should be all right be good to go. Yeah, I might have to do an update and put this bro snow. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to add it as an update uh, after this because <laughs> this snow came out really well for just like, you know, what is it? 30 minutes on the fly in expansion pack. For a dollar more, get bro snow. Yeah, this came out pretty dang nice for just a few minutes of mucking around. Hoth, or, oh yeah, that's a great name. Hoth. Say, just because just it's not rendered in Unity or whatever piece of crap you use, <laughs> doesn't mean it looks terrible. You know what? This is what happens. This is what happens. This is being called Sage. This is the Sage update. Was gonna be Hoth, it's now Sage. Thanks. <laughs> I, you know what, Sage, if I knew how to work in Unity and Unreal and all that, I would totally be there because uh, I know it's the future. Actually, I have a mat ID like you to try to make for Like an idea you want me to try and make? I can try and make one. Sure, man. Spit it out. Let's Let's try and make something. I don't have all day sage, come on. Spit it out. <laughs> you know the shot in Wally -E where Eve opens up her gun arm? You can see the white part that is, yeah, nope. Uh, I don't know that, but you know, let's go look it up. Wally Eve. Spit it out. 
So like this, when she opens up her gun. Like in here, I don't know if that, that that's translucent. I think that's just the reflection, isn't it? If I pass it, let me know. Oh, right in here. I think I see what you're talking about. Right here. Will this let me... That's a video. All right, hold on. All right, so I found what you're talking about. So... Damn, I have ne I never noticed that detail before that's really pretty so my guess is that it's overlaid like a label like almost like like this here Damn girl, you got some SSS. Uh, whoops, time zone. <laughs> it's all right, Mark. What's up, dude? Um, God, no, I don't want to go to this page. I just want to look at the picture. Yeah, I think. All right, I really want to tackle this now. I'm gonna bring this over here and let's. Ah, no, over there we go. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna save this in here. Close all. So it's like somewhat plasticky but subsurface scattering too all right Do a quick little box model. Why? Why'd you make a duplicate? Stop. Stop at cinema. Come down like that. All right. Is that close enough? Or it might be a little bit thinner than that, but that that's probably close enough. And then we can do that twice. Uh, no, we're not doing Enagons. Cinema thinks we're poor. Who who the hell uses Enagons? Oh god, that that ridge looks terrible. All right, there we go. I bet it's even thinner. Cool. All right. Um, so let's make a material. <laughs> I know it's trying to make me use N-Gons like a poor person. It's man, that hold on that can't be right that's still why the hell does it look like that like that that shouldn't be like that clean up that edge all right that that seems like too many subdivisions uh to get it that smooth that just seems stupid but whatever um 
we're being quick. So I don't know that I have any like desert looking HDRIs, but let's see what I can find. We need NASCAR to make a desert one. Road trip. Do 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 do. Thought there was a desert outdoor thing in here. Convention center. Abandoned putt putt. No. How about European holiday? We'll do this. Derelict. Not what, is, what I was expecting, but that'll do. All right, so it's got some subsurface scattering, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of that. I think we have to up some roughness in some areas too. Um, it's almost like, I can't tell if it's just the color grade on it or not, but so reflection is probably but it's about like 40%. Try that. It's a little too much. Let's try 0.2, half of that. See now, hmm. I'll try 0 0.4, 0 0.4 for now. I'll put some coating on the top afterwards. So we'll start with that. And then there's going to be just the lightest bit of subsurface scattering. And we'll make it just a little bit of blue. And bring this up. Turn that on. So we're getting, getting there a little bit. I think what I'm gonna have to do is probably bring in a texture and then use that as like an emission underneath. Or maybe I might have to, I might have to use three materials. It might have to be like a, this base here and keep it a little bit matte and then coating on top between the texture and this. Let me see. If I bring down reflection to like 0 0.5, this roughness will do like 0 0.1. So if you're just joining us, this is what we're trying to make here. Just try and get some textures going like that. Hmm. Okay, I think I think I'm digging that. I think that's what I'm gonna do is I'll start with this and then we're gonna build upon it. So this middle next one will just pretty much be a texture. And we're gonna blend. And um, you know what? I think I'm probably going to be doing incandescent. It's like kind of this blue. And since it's going to have a coating over it, I'm going to go a little bit heavier. And double sided? I don't think so. I don't think we need double sided. Let's try like five. Uh, nope, that gets 
super blown out. Now that I've got the saturation up, well, let me do five. All right, we'll do five. Um, and what I'm going to need is a texture. So can blend just using this. Let's see. Oh, do not want to drag things places. There we go. Apparently it dragged it anyway. This looks good. All right. So let's go ahead and put this as our base. And then we're going to have this as layer one. And this can be our blend color. I don't think this is going to be exactly what we want at the moment, but to start. All right, so I'm going to need to invert this. Probably going to have to get a ramp too, just to control it a little better. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> There we go. Turn that off for a second. Do Alt. Let's push this. All right, it's white. We can start to bring this down to like, try 25%. Go all black. Will it actually go black? All right, cool. So, like a porpoise, <laughs> like a porpoise, poor person, porpoisean. I'm just going to leave this like that for now because we still need to do a coat on top and maybe that will start to change it around a little bit. So let's clean this up a little. Do base and then this will be blend texture. Holy Lord, it's live again. Film the channel. Yeah, man. Every week, every Thursday, well, usually every Thursday we try. And then I don't think that I need to rename this. All right, so this will be our coat. I'm gonna make this one additive, right? Don't want an additive, kind of. So I just want the like, just littlest bit of diffuse. This one I don't want any subsurface. I'm not gonna be doing that on top. So let's look at this one down here. I have to get it closer to 10. So the trick is gonna be getting that detail to blend. And it may just be you now futzing around with this ramp here. I 
And then how much of this coat is actually gonna do something? Cause it's like, it's almost like it's blowing this out a little bit, but it's not actually. So maybe I don't want this to be additive. Maybe I just want it to take over. All right. Getting somewhere. <laughs> Thanks, Claude Mir. Uh, well, you know what, man? You can just learn how to make it, too, uh, since we just went over how to make it. But right now, we're trying to remake this arm in here it's one of the questions um you know i'm i think i think i'm starting to get on the right track i i almost wish there was like a blur node is there a blur no hmm hmm if i bring up the roughness will that start to blur out the bottom a little bit I really need to do subsurface on top. Oh, uh, nope, nope. I got gross. I don't know if there's an attribute. Smooth? Yeah, I don't think so. Let's take a look. Let's do some stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Utilities, attributes, point attribute, no. State, various states, no. Hmm. No, nothing to smooth. Here we are. Just... Yeah. I bet there's a way to do this in Houdini, um, but not here. Actually, let's see. Round corners is really awesome. You know, I could probably kill some of this subdivision and put on round corners and would clean up this like weird nipple thing that happens down here. Hmm. What are we trying to do? So um, we're trying to recreate this a little bit. So Sage, who's in the chat. Oh, Gaussian filter. Good idea, Mark. Maybe there's something in there that I can find. Um, Sage, who's in the chat, was asking if there's a way to kind of recreate this. And then... Um, so that's what we're starting to do, but I, I kind of need like a Gaussian filter or like a Gaussian blur, but we don't have it. Maybe noise, like a blend noise. This might get crazy. Let's if I do noise in here. The hell will happen? Nope. Fractal brown movement. Sounds like a baby's diaper. Thank you so much. If I could give you a high five right now, I would. Yeah, this noise is not doing anything. It's being brown all right let's um i really need some kind of blur just not happening transmittance what if i 
mess with this. I don't think it's going to do anything, but yeah. I think I just kind of have to play with the roughness a little bit and maybe anisotropic, anisotropic, anisotropy. That's a weird word to say. Oh, that's just twisting it. It's not giving us what we want. All right, this is a crazy idea. Maybe backlighting translucency just kind of gives it a little bit, gives it like a smoky feel. Ask Jules about it on the show. Yeah, there's blurring in the te Is there blurring in the texture node? Am I just... Hold on. Is it the bias? Is that what you're talking about? Here comes Kira to save the day, who really needs to have her own stream. Okay, so it is the bias. Cool. I never knew what that did. I gets a little crazy. Don't need it that much. So I'm just going to add more. Why not? Sounds like something Beaker would be saying. Think, think ISO, and ISO, and isotropy, and isotropy. I can't. I can't. Like I think of like anti flag. So like, and anti, and disable sharp filtering. Okay. That really blurs the hell out of it. Let's see. Zero is perfectly sharp, right? So like 0 0.05, just a little blur. I think we can do that. Just trying that for like giggles. Where did I put my sample of her? So get we're getting somewhere. I'm almost thinking dial this back in. I'm gonna bring the reflection down some. And then hers, just really slight blue. So I think we might just need to change some of this color around now too. So maybe 40. All right, we're getting somewhere. Our 
bring this down too. Maybe 2.5. See if I bring the reflection on this base all the way down, if that helps out. Because this reflection right in there is bothering me with how strong it is. So like I almost need like some dust on top or something. Like like the subsurface in here is so great. Maybe I just need some more subsurface. So, screw it. I'm going to set this to 10. Maybe this can go up to 50. Shades. All right, let's try bringing this down. Oh, no. All right. How about this one? If I do additive here, what happens there? No. Okay. So if we go up to 100, that's too much. If I go down to 80, I think that's going to be not enough. I'm just going to have to. Play with it a little bit more. What happens if I come in here, kill the diffuse? It's all right. All right. That's off too. All right. I'm gonna focus on this base for a second because I want to get oh, that subsurface is starting to look kind of nice. If I hook this back up. I think I have to do additive. I think that's part of the problem. Let's get this out of here. I wish there was a way to just bypass nodes like you could like you can in Houdini. Like sometimes it gets a little bit irritating, for lack of a better word. All right, so that's off. Cool. I want to add. I almost want like a bump of noise. So let's come in here and add some bump. Just bump it up, bump, bump, bump it up. Do, 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 do. All right, we can do this. We can do this, guys and gals. Complexity, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do like 32 and tighten this up. Maybe too much, how about eight? There we go. All right, all right. Let's see. I don't know that this is gonna work. I think I'm gonna have to do both. Yep, that's okay. Hmm. 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 Let's come in here and do our redshift object geometry displacement. It's a pause log, if I'm saying that right. Thanks for joining us on Periscope. that 
it. I think I'm gonna even go down to four. And then because I'm doing additive now, I think it's kind of killing some of the bump. It's getting a little bit tighter here. Different angle. Overall bump, that's what I had it in. Hmm, why? Are you not doing more? Put it on the base. All right, hold on. You should be doing way more than that. Is it just because it's too complex? going to be too much now. Why? Why isn't the bump doing anything? This is bump map, right? Yeah. The hell is this nonsense? All right. area just checking my messages because Dave was texting me earlier failure with some cool characters that is not a failure sir thanks for joining us on Periscope Just so I know that I'm this light's actually contributing something. Let's do two. Alright, this bump is being obnoxious. Is it alright, maybe let me try this. I'll throw it on the actual object and see if that does anything hmm uh, if you have an external GPU it does but the trash cans unfortunately use AMD cards which um, outside of cycles, which still doesn't uh, like truly support it, um, there's no real third party render engine. Hell yeah, Arnold, man, this is like, this is if, is if, as if Arnold had GPU, and hopefully they will soon, because Arnold's awesome. Yeah, Octane doesn't work either. Um, Arnold does, Cycles does if you use CPU, Corona. Next version, yeah. I read that, Kira. I, I'm excited for Bump and Normals to become one. I'm a little bit upset that it's just not doing it. Like, just, why, why isn't it doing the Bump right now? Um, it's, kind of absurd at the moment like is it because of the sub subsurface <laughs> uh 
I just turn that off and see like it doesn't make any sense well yeah who needs subsurface when I can just do that all right let's see if that has any effect on it No. Oh, there's the bump. What What took you so long, bump? Is it really because it was in a subsurface? Like, did, did I have to have it? When I throw buckets on, why? That is bananas. Why, are, why, if I turn on bucket rendering, is it killing it? Does it... That's... Very, that's craziness right there. What the hell is happening? Um, it's because your node just gives zero and one values, multiply them. Like you're saying the bump, no, like the this noise. So I need to multiply it. Yeah, I learn a ton doing stuff on on Thursdays. So if I multiply this, you say it will. Gary, you're a liar. You are a liar. Yeah, I mean, I like, I could put it into the reflectance, but I want. I was thinking the whole thing. All right. Let's try reflectance. And roughness. Okay, you guys win. Kira does not win. <laughs> I tried it with the uh, multiply. You mean mu multiply where? I had a multiply, had it coming out here. All right. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, so let's do this. All right, that's starting to look a little bit funky like I want. Blend color one. There we go. No, I want. Yeah, blend color one. That's exactly what I want. What do I miss from Arnold? Um, just like there's something about the actual realism. Like I was, I was converting some Arnold. Uh, shaders over to Redshift earlier today for my reel because um, I need to re-render a scene and like there, I don't like there's just no comparison. Like the subsurface scattering is way better in Arnold because it has uh, I think it's point based subsurface scattering instead of um, surface based, which Redshift is surface based currently. But they said that they're gonna switch to point based. And um, so like the materials that I was switching over were had some subsurface scattering, kind of like what we're doing now. And they I had, I had to tweak it so much more in Redshift than the way Arnold would set up. Um some of the nodes, some of the just like the math that happens behind the scenes makes way more sense in Arnold like it's just cleaner in Arnold too like it, it you know it's math like what, like what Kira was just saying like try it with a multiply node no like this should be just as it is you know and, and I shouldn't have to do any tricks to get stuff to work like it should work like you expect it to work in every other engine um so you know, every, everyone keeps saying Redshift is great, except for 
the quirks and then it's true like redshift is awesome except for the quirks that happen I'm kind of digging this. Do I still have any reflectance on down here? Nope, it's just here. I think I'm bringing this up to like, not 25, 0.25. And then this will be 80. Um, I mean, there's lots of little things. Like even, it sounds, this is gonna sound really stupid, but sometimes I feel like the IPR in Arnold, even though it's CPU, is faster than redshift like i'll kill bucket rendering and i do that and that and it's not fluid like it's got a jump while arnold it just moves around and you know i'll turn under sampling all the way up to three and i still have to go like this slow to get it to keep track like in arnold if i jump around it just it works you know i don't know Plank is awesome, except for the quirks. And like everything's like that, but like. Yeah, like. I mean, I I can change this to just be brute force. Like. Brute force all the way. And then turn it to bucket and it just goes. But even even so. so it can't start tracing rays badly fast. Wait, so it can just start tracing rays badly faster than redshift and get to the first pixel. Yeah. Um, maybe that's what it is. Just that whole like cache time. And maybe, I don't know. I, I understand the whole point and I used caching earlier and it definitely saved me a ton of time and it was a little bit quirky to set up with like lighting and getting it right. Um, but man, it, it really started to piss me off. Like, so you, yeah, the thing is if I go in and turn off my GPUs, so you have to go into the actual preferences for Redshift to turn them off, which is one plus to Octane, is that you can just turn them on and off. So I have to turn this off, but then it also affects my rendering. So, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, Billy, but even even Octane's IPR seems to just like track for the most part, you know? Like I'm not, I'm in bucket rendering right now, so it's not gonna do it, but um, I don't, uh, there's just some things. And not all CPU engines, cause Cycles definitely can't keep up. Cycles is, it's fast sometimes, but definitely not keeping up with the IPR. That's with like CPU. Doot, 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 doot. All right, digging this, turn that a little bit. Well, Sage, kind of getting close. It's something I think I'm gonna have to play with because I'm already like almost a half hour over on this. Um, but if anyone has questions before I start to roll out, let me know. Um, let me just check in with Dave really quick too. Is 
Sage, I'll keep keep picking away at this. Um, cool. All right. I just did this noise to bump node and it works fine. Yes, you need to multiply it. You have bump value for that. Yeah, sleep is what I need. Don't let MDA hear you said cycles isn't the fastest. Yeah, I'm sure I just set off Casey Hupke's alarm because he loves cycles. Um, look, I mean, cycles is great. If you uh, if you like their nodes and everything, that's awesome because they have a great node system. But the IPR is not good. You're welcome, Mark. Um, so before I roll out of here, um, little surprise. If you hang around and aren't doing anything in about an hour, Dave is going to jump on and do some stuff in Octane, possibly. Um, so if you are an Octane user, hang around for a little bit, possibly about an hour, Dave's going to try and jump on. No guarantee, but um, possibly two streams tonight, which would be pretty cool. Um, that's about it. If you guys want to help support doing all this every week and the tutorials and everything check out my gumroad page um we've got you know snow materials there metal materials leather glass um a caramel one which i know dave likes it to be caramel but i say caramel um what else i think that's about it yeah i think that's it so yeah, hang around. Uh, Dave is probably going to try and stream in about an hour. Uh, if you want to come hang out and chat in the Slack, go to brograph.com slash Slack and hang out with us there and chat it up. And uh, yeah, but next week, um, it's probably going to be another quick tip type tutorial. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to email in suggestions or comment. And uh, yeah, you guys are kind of what makes this all happen because I do most things based on suggestions and um, conversations with you all. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out and I will talk to you soon.